Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Devedi from Department of Biosciences and Engineering, IIT Guwahati and what we are discussing, we are discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology and so far what we have discussed in this particular module, we have discussed about the delivery of DNA into the host and why we are discussing this because in the previous module we have discussed about the how you can be able to utilize the different enzyme and as well as the vector to produce a recombinant DNA. So what we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture is that you are going to isolate a gene or the gene fragment from the genome. Either you are going to aware of the genome sequences or you are not aware of the genome sequences. In both of these cases, either you will use the geno genomic library or the CTNA library or you will use the site directed uh, primers and you will actually going to use the PCR to get the gene fragment. Irrespective of the sources, you are going to get the gene fragment. This gene fragment has to be digested with the restriction enzyme and that is how you are going to get the sticky ends. So, for example, in this case, if you are using the two restriction enzyme, then you are going to have the two sticky ends. And the same way you are actually going to treat the vectors. So, in this case, the plasmid which is going to be digested with the restriction enzyme RE1 and RE2. So, that is how you are actually going to have the sticky ends like the RE1 and RE2. And uh, once you put them together and you are going to put a ligation reaction with the help of the enzyme T4 DNA ligase, you are going to get the chimeric DNA or the chimeric uh, plasmids. This chimeric plasmid has to be delivered into the host and uh, if you recall in the previous lecture we have discussed about the uh, uh, DNA delivery methods utilizing the transformations. So, we have discussed about the transformations in the bacteria and uh, or we have discussed about the transformation in yeast. And in both of these methods, you are going to treat the cells with a chemical agent and with the help of the chemical agent, it is actually going to change the surface chemistry and it is also going to make the cells competent enough to take up the uh, exogenous uh, DNA. And once the DNA is being taken up, you are going to put them into the recovery phase and that is how you are going to get the transform colonies. Now, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the how you can be able to deliver the DNA in the mammalian cells. So, as we discussed, the DNA delivery in host is very important for the protein production, right? And uh, when you do the protein production, um, the the and as you can as you can recall when we were discussing about the surface chemistry or the other kinds of uh, proper um, modulations which are allowing the cells to take up the DNA, but that kind of uh, modifications are not possible in the mammalian system because uh, first of all the mammalian cell wall or does not have a cell wall and the mammalian system is the surface chemistry is very very complicated compared to the bacterial system. So, in those cases we have the alternate approaches to deliver the uh, DNA into the host. So, we have the four approaches what we can use in the de delivering the DNA into the mammalian cells. The first approach is called as the 
chemical transfection method. The second approach is called as the liposome or the lipoplex methods. The third approach is called as the bacteriofactin and the fourth method is called as the transductions. So in the first method, you are going to use the transfection agents or you are going to use the chemical agents. These chemical agents are actually going to make the complex with DNA in such a way that DNA is going to be taken up by the mammalian cells. So they will be going to be taken up by the mammalian cells. So in the in the liposome or the lipoplex method, you are going to do the same thing, but instead of using the chemical agents, you are going to use the lipids. And in this case, sometimes you are going to use the cationic lipids and in that case, the cationic lipids are actually going to bind the DNA and that's how you are going to have, you are going to get the DNA lipid complex and this DNA lipid complex can be delivered or can be easily, readily been taken up by the cells. In some cases, people are also trying with the liposome method. So where you are actually entrapping the DNA into the liposome and that's how you are actually, these, these liposomes are going to be having the DNA inside and that's how it, they are going to be taken up by the mammalian cells. In the bacteriofactin, you are using the bacteria as a source to deliver the DNA. So bacteria as a source to deliver the DNA. Similarly, uh, in the transductions, you are going to use the virus as a source to deliver the DNA into mammalian cells. Okay, so let's start discussing with the first method and that is called as the chemical transfection method. So in the chemical transfection method, you are going to treat the principal the principle behind the chemical transfection technique is that you coat or complex the DNA with a polymeric compound to a reasonable size precipitate. It facilitates the interaction of the precipitate with the plasma membrane and uptake through the endocytosis. There are multiple chemical compounds have been discovered which can be able to make the complex and deliver the DNA into the mammalian cells. So in a chemical transaction method, because you know that the DNA is negatively charged, so you can add the chemical agents which are positively charged. So once you are actually going to add the positively charged, they are going to make the complex with DNA and as a result, they are actually going to make the visible precipitate and these visible precipitate are actually going to be taken up by the cell with a process which is called as the endocytosis. So these particles will, you know, going go and sit onto the plasma membrane and then the plasma membrane is going to be taken up inside and by a process which is called as the endocytosis. Uh, there are many methods, uh, many chemicals what you can use. So one of the popular method is the calcium phosphate method. So in this method, the DNA is mixed with the calcium chloride in a phosphate buffer and incubated for 20 minutes. Afterwards, the transfection mixture is added to the plate in a dropwise fashion. DNA calcium phosphate complex forms a precipitate and deposited on the cell in a uniform layer. The particulate matter is taken up by the endocytotid in the, into the internal storage of the cell. The DNA is then escapes from the precipitate and reached to the nucleus through an unknown mechanism. This method suits to the cells growing in a monolayer or in a suspension, but not for the cell growing in the clumps. But the technique is inconsistent and the successful transfection depends on the DNA phosphate complex particle size and which is very difficult to control. Which means in this case, you are actually going to take the DNA and then you are actually going to add the calcium chloride along with the phosphate buffer. Okay, so what will happen is the calcium phosphate is going to react and that's how the DNA is going to make a complex with the calcium phosphate. And once it forms the complex with the calcium phosphate, it is actually going to form the particles like structure. So it's going to form the precipitate. So, so imagine that you have a cell, right? You have a single monolayer of cell, right? So all these particles are actually going to sit on top of this. So once the particle sits on any cell, 
the cell has an inherent tendency that it is actually going to eat these cells or these particles okay just like as we take the food particles for example so when we take the food particle and it goes inside the you know our body the cells are actually going to take up this food okay and as a result what will happen is the this particle is going to be cut inside then once the, the particles are going to be inside the dna is going to be released from this and that's how the dna will actually going to reach to the nucleus now what is the disadvantage the disadvantage is that if this particle size are small enough they will all they are not going to cause any damage to the cell but they are if they are big enough if they are going to grow because more and more calcium phosphate if it reacts with the dna the size of this this uh, calcium phosphate particle is going to grow up so if the size is very high then it is actually going to cause the damage to the cell so this advantage of the calcium phosphate method is the severe physical damage to the cellular integrity due to the particle matter particulate matter sitting settling on to the cell it results in the reduced cellular viability and the cytotoxicity to the cell so uh, one of the major disadvantage of the calcium phosphate method is that it is actually going to give you the very low recovery because uh, if you are if you are very good and you are controlling the events in such a way that you are going to make the particle size very small then it is going to work if it is doesn't right then you have, the particle size are going to be very big it is going to cause the physical damage to the cellular integrity and that's how it is actually going to kill the cells so what is the alternative the ultimate ulti alternative is that you may go with the polypexis method so polypexis method is that in a is an alternative method which was evolved where the dna was complexed with the chemical agent to form the soluble precipitate through the electrostatic interaction with the dna a number of polycationic carbohydrates such as dae dextran positively charged cationic lipids such as transactin or polyamines etc are being used for this purpose the soluble aggregates of the dna with the polycationic complex is readily being taken up by the cell and it reaches to the nucleus for the expression so what you are going to do in a polypexis method where instead of using the calcium phosphate you are going to use the material which is going to make a soluble precipitate with the dna and in this category you can use the da dextran or positively charged lipids or you can use the polyamines and all of these are actually going to make a complex with dna they are, these complexes are going to be soluble in nature and that's how they are actually going to be taken up by the cell so what you're going to do is you are going to take up the you are you are going to take this chemical agent polypex method or you are going to take the plasmid right in two vials and then you are mix them together so the mix the equal volume of transfectin and the dna solution then you incubate for 20 minutes to form the dna liposome complex so the dna liposome complex is formed then you can take the plated cells and then you can actually be able to add this drop wise onto the Cells, okay so when you drop we add the drop white it is going to eventually going to spread on this and since it is actually going to be a soluble aggregate it's going to still form the aggregates these are going to be taken up by the cell and that's how you are going to get the expression of these cells so their dna will enter inside the cell and then then the dna will go to the nucleus for the transfection and as well as translations then we have the second method where you are going to use the liposome and lipoplex transfection method so the liposome and the lipoplex method another approach of dna transfection in the animal cell is to pack the cell in a lipid vesicle or liposome in this approach the dna containing vesicle will be fused with the cellular membrane and deliver the dna to the target cell preparation of the liposome and the encapsulating dna was a crucial step to achieve the good transfection efficiency liposome prepared with the cationic or the neutral lipid facilitate the dna binding to form the complex or the lipoplex and allow the uptake of these pluses complexes by the endocytosis the lipoplex method was applicable to a wide variety of cells and found to be transfect large size dna as well another advantage of the liposome or lipoplexes is that the addition of ligand in the lipid bilayer it can be used to target a specific organ in the animal or a site 
within the organ. So in the liposome or the lipoplex method, you are going to either use a cationic lipids and make the DNA lipid complexes or you are going to make the liposomes and you are going to entrap the DNA into that. So when, once you prepare the liposome, it is going to go and fuse with the cells and that's how it is actually going to give you the DNA the deliver the DNA. So to explain this uh, method, we have prepared a small demo clip where we have uh, actually uh, prepared the, you know, where we have, uh, you know, discussed about how, what are the different steps you can take and how you can be able to perform the transactions. Hello everyone, myself Suram Barnesh, a research scholar at the Department of Biosciences, Bioengineering, IIT Gauhati. In this video, we will take you to how to transfect any mammalian cell and uh, analyze the results. And uh, during the video, we will also discuss uh, what are the precautions needs to be taken while transfecting and uh, different uh, ways of transfecting like chemical transfection and uh, electroporation methods. And also, we will discuss about uh, how to analyze the results uh, like uh, after transfecting what are the ways we can uh, analyze whether the transfection is happened or not like uh, through western blood or through uh, fluorescence microscopy if it is uh, if you are uh, insert of interest it is conjugated to any fluorescent protein so let's start the video in this video we will show how to subculture the cells and count the cells and see for the transfection studies. First we have to remove the remaining media, then trypsinize the cells, then we will count the cells and see it. Now I will show how to do trypsinization. Now, I am going to add the trypsin to detach the cells. Hello everyone, in this video we will be demonstrating how to deliver plasmid DNA into mammalian cells. There are two methods available to deliver DNA. One is chemical based method like using transfection reagents and the another method is electroporotic. Electroporotic method there are various instruments in which specially designed buffer 
containing plasmid will be delivered into mammalian cell using pulses. But in chemical transfection method, there are wide variety of choices available like using cationic lipids or peptides or polymers. In this video, we are going to show how to transfect mammalian cells using polyethylene-imine-based reagent. So, in this method, first we are going to mix In this matter, we are going to show PA based transfection. For that, we have to mix DNA with the incomplete media first. After mixing, we have to add polyethylene amine directly to the, the mixture. Then we can see a visible white precipitate, which means the DNA is complexed with the PEA and ready to go. The ratio between DNA and the transfection region should be 1 is 4. Let's start the game. We have already allocated incomplete medium. So, for this we have to add plasmid DNA. the DNA already concentration is located. The mixing should be proper, otherwise there is no complex formation. You can tap the tube in order to get mixed. This is the PEA transfection reagent. So, this is 1 mg per ml concentration. We added 10 microgram of DNA. So, we have to add 1 is 4. That means, 40 microgram of PEI. So, I am going to add 40 microliter of PEI to the cells. Incubate the tube for at least 5 minutes to get the complex form. After 5 minutes are over, then we can see a visible precipitate, white precipitate inside the tube. So, I am going to add this complex directly to the cells. Here the wells which contains reduced serum medium, reduced serum containing medium. So, if serum 10% serum, if we are 10% serum, then it may complex with the, uh, the PEI DNA complex, then it may not get internalized inside the cells. So, we should take care of that.
after cells are de detached we have taken into clean falcon then we have to centrifuge the cells as the cells are very delicate we have to centrifuge at 1500 rpm for 2 minutes Now we have to remove the supernatant and resuspend the cells in fresh media. After resuspension, we have to count the cells. So I am going to take 20 microliter of this cell suspension and mix with the 20 microliter of tripan blue and count under new bar chamber. before counting we have to see how a counting chamber or hemocytometer look like this is a typical hemocytometer also called as new bar chamber which contains this squares in upper side and lower side with each square having depth of 0.1 mm and area of 0.0025 mm square now i am going to put a cover slip on this chamber then i will add slowly cell suspension through capillary action it will spread all over the squares
check the how many cells are there in all the squares. Now we how to count, how to count the cells. So here a typical new bar chamber which contains squares. Five squares. So we have to count cells in these squares. So each square is an area of zero point zero zero two five millimeter square, and total small squares sixteen. So total area of this whole square is zero point zero four millimeter square. So the depth of the this each well is. 0.1 millimeter. So, what what is the volume? 0.04 into 0.1. So that is total 0.004 millimeter cube or 0.004 microliter. So say we have combined cells in each well. Say this is A, B, C, D. Here we have 100. Here we have one fifty. Here we have one ten. Here we have hundred. Okay. So the total cells we have to take average. That means hundred plus one fifty plus one ten plus hundred divided by four. Total four squares we are counting. The average is 115. So 115 cells in 0.004 microliter volume. So how many cells per 1 ml? So that we can calculate simply by 0.004 into 1000. That will give the volume cells per ml. we have successfully transfected the cells now we will try to analyze whether the transfection is successful or not so i will show some of the images i have taken after this transfection so uh, let's see first of all this is a non transfected image of non transfected so we can see there is no fluorescence when you see transfected one the cells will glow like this so that means our transfection is successful so so far we have learned that how to transfect the cells we have used the polyethylene imine based transfection reagent which is basically a polymer uh 
which conjugates with the DNA and uh, the precipitation we will use for the transfection. The most of the transfection process through endocytosis. During transfection also we have to make sure the ratio between the transfection reagent and DNA should be optimized. The result what we have shown you is the optimized one. So you have to according to your requirement you have to optimize the transfection, uh, transfection uh, reagent versus DNA. And also uh, the plasmid DNA need to be contamination free otherwise uh, you can see uh, bacteria bone before the transfection happens. Uh, we can do the same transfection through electroporotic method also but uh, in that case we should not use any salts while preparing plasmid DNA that should be taken care of otherwise uh, there should be some conduction inside the cuvette so it will kill all the cells. So these precautions need to be taken. Uh, with this I will conclude the video and thanks for watching. So in this demo the students have discussed how you can be able to plate the cells, how you can be able to count the cells and then how you can be able to treat the cells, uh, prepare the you know the lipoplex uh, complexes and how you can be able to treat the cells with these uh, complexes and then how you can be able to check the transfection efficiency. Now let's go to the next method and the next method is uh, the liposome and the lipoplex transfection method that is anyway we have discussed. So this is the basic principle that you have the lipofectamine reagent and that is actually going to make the complex with the DNA. So DNA complex is going to be taken up by the cell by a process which is called as endocytosis and uh, from the endosome this DNA is going to be released and this DNA will go to the nucleus for the expression studies. Now let's go to the next method and the next method is the bactofactin. So bactofactin is the method where you are going to use the bacteria for the uh, DNA delivery. Okay. So bactofactin is more common in the case of plants. So this mode of gene transfer is very popular in the plant where agrobacterium tumefacin is used. So in animal cells the bacteria is actively being taken up by the host cell through a process which is called phagocytosis and the entrapped in a membranous vesicle known as phagosome. Then the bacteria get escaped from the phagosome and get lysed to release the DNA into the cytosol. In alternate mechanism the bacteria get lysed inside the phagosome and the DNA is released into the cytosol. The bacteria species used in methods are Salmola, Shigella, etc. Most of the strain used to deliver the DNA are attenuated so they should not harm the host cells. So in a bactofactin what you are going to do is you are going to take the bacteria right. So this is a bacterium cell right and uh, you take the DNA right and then you mix them together. So bacteria will take up this DNA and that is how it is actually going to form the DNA bacterial complex. Once the DNA bacterial complex is formed it is going to be taken up by the endocytosis or the phagocytosis and uh, once it is going to be taken up by the uh, cell entry process it is going to be present in the membranous vesicle and from this membranous vesicle the DNA is going to be released and this DNA will go into the nucleus for the expression studies. Then we come to the last uh, process and that process is called as the transduction. So in the transduction you are going to use the virus as a source to deliver the DNA. So transduction or the virus mediated uh, DNA delivery into the mammalian cells. So virus particle has a natural tendency to attack and deliver the DNA into the eukaryotic cell. Most of the viruses they do not have their own cellular machinery for replication and that is why they have the inherent tendency that well if you add them to the mammalian cells they will go and attach to the mammalian cell and that is how they will actually going to inject the DNA into the cell and this, this DNA will go directly to the nucleus and it is actually going to recombine with the genome and that is how it is going to be a part of the genome. And then once the genome is going to replicate it is actually going to make the multiple copies of the virus 
and that's how your the virus is going to spread throughout the body so utilizing or exploiting that mechanism we can actually be able to deliver the dna into the eukaryotic cell so cloning the gene of interest into a viral vector is a innovative way to deliver the dna into the host cell if the recombination sequences are available the delivered dna is integrated into the host and replicate virus has essential component for expression of protein required for the dna replication rna polymerase and the other ligand for the attachment onto the cell in addition it has additional structural component to regulate the infection cycle the viral vectors containing cassette to perform all these function then it is fully sufficient to propagate independently few virus strain may cause disease if their propagation will be uncontrolled a mechanism has been devised to keep a check on the uncontrolled proliferation of the virus in a cell for crucial structural blocks are placed on another helper virus in this case the virus propagate only if the helper virus has been supplied along with the viral vector this particular arrangement is made with the virus strain which can cause a disease after integrating into the genome such as the lenti virus so in the transaction species you can have the two different types of viruses adenovirus or you can have the lenti virus okay so adenovirus can be used very extensively to express the protein where the adenovirus is going to attack to the cell they will deliver the gene of your interest to the nucleus and that's how you are going to work in the lenti virus lenti virus are more infectious and self replicating that's why when you use the lenti virus the lenti virus can be used in two cassette the so cassette one which will actually going to have the your gene of interest and the cassette two uh, so cassette one and then the cassette two you can keep all the essential genes so once you supply both of them they will actually going to replicate and they will actually going to supply your gene but as soon as you don't add the cassette 2 or you you remove the cassette 2 the, the it will still be able to deliver the gene but it will not be able to cause the infection okay so that's how you can actually be able to control the activity of some of the infectious uh, viral particles such as the antiviruses so in a transaction what happen is that you are actually going to use the uh, you know the for example in this case we have taken an example of bacteriophage so in the step one the phage is going to inject the dna into the host right then the phage enzyme are going to break down the host uh, dna okay so it's going to break down the host dna and the uh, in the step 3 to 4 the cell creates no phage including the phage and the host dna and uh, in the 5 to 6 the transducing phage insert the donor dna and uh, the donor dna included in the recipient chromosome due to the recombination so in the last step it is going to recombine and that's how whatever the dna you have the phage has injected it will be a part of the host genome and that's how when the host is replicating it is also going to replicate the viral genome so this is the different method what we have discussed for delivering the dna into the uh, host system now in the what we have discussed we have discussed about the uh, isolation of the gene right and We have discussed about the isolation of genes. So we discuss about the two approaches, A and B. Uh, one is the genomic library approach, and the other is cDNA library approach. And these are the approaches when you can use uh, when the genomic sequences are not known. Whereas you can use the C approach, where you can use the PCR with the site-specific primer, and that you can do if your genomic sequences are known. Then once you got the gene fragment, like this gene fragment, you can actually be able to do the cloning of this gene fragment into cloning of the gene fragment into vector. So in the step two, this is the step one, this is the step two, right? That same you are going to do for the vector also. And then in the, and then there's step three step three you are going to put the ligation reactions right so that is also a part of the cloning reactions and the step four you are going to deliver the dna into the host right so in deliver the dna 
into host. Then the step five, you are going to screen these transformed clones. So you are going to do the screening of transformed clones. Okay. And the step six, you are going to check the overexpression. So so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the step one, we have discussed about the step two, we discuss about step three and step four. Now in the subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the step five and six where we are going to first discuss how you can be able to screen the transformed clones or the clone where the DNA has been delivered. And then lastly, we are going to discuss about how you can be able to use the different method to induce the protein production. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss about the, uh, the screening of the clones and as well as the uh, overexpression. Thank you. Mm -hmm.